So, um, as much as you want to hear about me and Will, we're here to see talks. So, the first one is Adobe Stock's guest, Jasper Janssen. He was part of their brilliant recent art director, Hovering Art Directors campaign. He's going to tell us what an art director does, the importance of collaboration, and some tips on how to hover beautifully. Take it away, Jasper. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, so as you already heard from the intro from Alex, there's 10 amazingly inspirational speakers and me. Uh, I'm pretty sure I know now what it's like to all be like the warm-up guy for Pink Floyd or something, or like the design equivalent of that. Um, I'm a senior creative at Achtung Gary Bowen in Amsterdam, it's an, adver an advertising agency. And I'm here on behalf of Adobe Stock to talk today about hovering art directors. Um, I, I will tell you a little bit about a campaign we've done on this very same topic, and there's a couple of questions I will try to answer today about hovering art directors. First, what is hovering exactly? I think you will all be pretty familiar with what a hovering art director is already, but I'll do a quick intro anyway. Why should you care? Always a good question to ask, uh, and I will try to answer why you should care about hovering. Setting the bar pretty high for myself here. Finally, how can you be a good hoverer? Hoverer, it should be a verb, right? Should make that a verb. So let's start with a quick intro. What is hovering? I think everyone is familiar with this image. <laughs> You've probably all been there in maybe one of each of these positions yourself. Someone is behind a computer and you're being micromanaged by a committee of people. Um, yeah, for designers, the struggle is very real. Uh, I think this old ad from BBDL New York <laughs> it describes pretty well how hard it can be to keep up with like the demands of all these people. Now, this certainly isn't just an advertising phenomenon. You'll find hovering <laughs> in many, many different fields. It's like architecture, fashion, photography. Basically, wherever something is made by one person behind a computer and there are other people who have to judge it, you will find hovering. Um, and hovering art directors are known to have some flaws, and I will mention some of them here because it's fun. Um, they're known for being terrible <laughs> at giving feedback. You know, they start off with something positive, but then they undermine that positive thing in this very same breath. Um, they are known for changing their minds all the time. <laughs> They're known for not knowing what they want. I think, and when they not, don't know what they want, they'll say something like this, have you tried more versions? Which is the easiest feedback to give because it's basically come back with more options for me to choose from. Uh, so designers, if you're a creative director, design director, whatever director says this, press them on it. Uh, they give very unclear briefings, <laughs> some scribbles and you're left to figure it out. And they have massive egos. They're also known for <laughs> massive egos. <laughs> <laughs> but is that always fair? Uh, of course, this reputation has to come from somewhere, so it's probably partly true. But isn't it a bit easy to just demonize the person who's doing the hovering? Why? Well, because cl creative collaboration isn't always easy. Creativity is a struggle on its own, but doing it across different disciplines makes it even harder. And the further a discipline is removed from yours, the harder it gets. Um, and I think we should all care about the importance of collaboration because nobody makes great work alone. Everyone needs feedback. Everyone needs to be inspired by someone or something. And this is exactly why you should care about how well you hover. Because when you're hovering, you're making stuff together. And isn't it also a little bit why you are all here today? To be inspired by others, and to hear from people from different disciplines. So that's my little introduction into hovering art directors. Now let me talk a little bit about my discipline, which is advertising, and tell you about three different things I learned about hovering while making a hovering art director campaign. <laughs> uh, some, some notes on creative collaboration. So let me take you back to our original brief, which was almost two years ago that we got from Adobe Stock. And then you, we got something like this. Explain that Adobe Stock gives you access to over 75 million creative assets from directly within your creative cloud apps, so you can spend more time designing, less time searching. So it's a pretty big story. 
But what does that come down to? It comes down that there's now stock inside Photoshop. So if you're like in Photoshop or After Effects or Illustrator, you can you need kittens, you can search your kittens right in the in a little box in the program. And the clear benefit that they gave us for this brief was you can now work up to 10 times faster with stock materials. So we're like, okay, that's a clear brief. This is us thinking about, okay, what we do with like a speed benefit of 10 times, working 10 times faster. How do we explain this benefit to designers? And we thought, why not use the person most designers have a hard time to keep up with? And this is how we arrived at Hovering Art Directors. Now, we originally immediately had the idea, okay, we want to do a film about a Hovering Art Director. But the brief was just specified to do an email, so not a film. So we got to, luckily, we managed to persuade Adobe by saying, what if we make a film and then we put it in the email? <laughs> so it's a true story. <laughs> And that's when we made this film. Hey, Dan, have you got a sec? Um, yep. Oh, great, because the client's going to be here really soon. You know, we've got this amazing ad for the new ginger beer. Beast, uh, yeah? Yeah. Playful, but rough, but also epic, but quite modest at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Um, great, so if I leave you, what, in about an hour? Is that enough time? Well, it's not finished, but... No, clearly. It needs to be more manly. Give him a beard. A long beard or, you yeah. know, stubbly beard? Yeah, long. Like dwarf long? No, not that no, long. OK. He, well, he's mother nature, but then he's also, like, father nature as well. Asexual. Ooh, maybe we should add some wolves. Um... Whoa, 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 not, not, not a whole pack. Like, two. There's too much Wes Anderson in it now. It's not really screaming modest. Is it? Ginger beer. Ginger beard, right? Right? So his beard is ginger. Yeah. Badgers? Are badgers wild? Okay. Definitely. Look at it. It's Ooh. crazy. It's pretty big. Do you know what? I was right. We need a whole pack of wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. I suggest. Oh, Kim, 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 Kim. What do you think? Check it out. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, really raw. Nice yeah. work. Okay. Um, from a strategy perspective, though, research has shown that millennials are 58% more engaged when there's a kitten in the advert. So, can we work that in somehow? Oh, like the husky over here. Oh my God, so cute. Ah, how did he get in there? <laughs> oh, by the way, the client is here. Okay. Kittens don't work. Uh, uh, what about a baby bear? Yeah, whatever. Thank you. What, what, just, a baby, just a baby bear there, baby bear there, right there, baby, right there, right there, baby bear. Grizzly or a... Uh... That one, that one. All right, right. okay, no, okay. Two, okay, two no, pixels to the, the left. Okay. Two pixels um, to the left. Bigger, 10% bigger. All oh, right. Stop, perfect. Genius. What if the bear had a little bit more personality? So... Uh, thank you. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about the process of making this film because it was really fun to write. Uh, we immediately started to write like loads of jokes like this, just like all written out and stuff that we just hear around our own agency. We just like note, write it down and we all, all think written out. And then we started to talk to our director, it was uh, Sebastian Hedin. He's at Hobby Film in Sweden. and. Um, we showed him all these completely written out jokes and he basically said, what you have is the setup is so simple with like this art director and designer and it's really easy to relate that it's also really easy for the actors to just get this and you don't need to actually brief them so much. You can just, uh, what we can just do is just a whole lot of improv where you just feed them a little core of a joke and then let them play around it. And that works so well that we had so much more footage that we could do all kinds of edits that we never planned. We didn't have emails even to put them in. Um, uh, so for instance here, we just told the art director you want to have a sunrise instead of a sunset. Pew, pew. Okay. Ooh, what about a sunrise instead of a sunset? That's gonna make absolutely no difference. No, of course it will. <laughs> it's gonna look there's the same. A, no, there's a huge difference between a sunrise and a sunset. Okay, let's see. There's more birds out for a sunrise, I think. Yeah, this is a great little improv. Here's another one. 
I want to go for black. Okay. With a little bit of white. Do you want black or do you want white? I want black with a little bit of white. So you no, want grey? Gray. No, I don't want grey. <laughs> So that's the first thing I learned about hovering while doing a campaign about hovering is don't overbrief. Leave room for creative people to thrive. Um, leave room for interpretation. I think this applies to actors, but just as well to designers or anyone in other creative fields. Uh, I mean, directors are in their way a little bit like hovering art directors, only they hover actors instead of designers. So we showed this, we did this little film, and then it just blew, Adobe saw it, or Adobe Stock saw it, and they were, they loved it, and they said, we want to make this a global thing, we want to make it bigger. So we started to think about like, how do we extend this campaign? Uh, how are we gonna make it bigger? And Adobe Stock talks about that they like a piece that celebrates the role of art directors and creatives across the industry. But we started to think about what would designers love? What would be something that designers would really like? And it also shows that we really understand their struggle. So again, we didn't really look far for inspiration. We just looked, what do our designers love? Well, they're like toys. So the idea came up pretty fast where we started thinking, what if we make a hovering art director designer toy? And this is what we made. <laughs> the talking hovering art director action figure. It's the only di designer toy that can actually critique your design because there's a little speaker in the base and a motion sensor. So when you touch him, he can give you feedback. <laughs> and we made a little toy commercial for him. I'll show you. He's a creative visionary. The man you can count on for advice, even if you didn't ask for it. Introducing the Talking Hovering Art Director action figure. Stuck? There's no problem he can't solve. Mm, try some more versions. Or a designer he can't inspire. The 90s called, and they want their drop shadows back. And if you get lost in the details, he'll show you the bigger picture. Trust me, you'll thank me when we're in can. Get a little creative help. Just make it pop. From Adobe Stock and the Talking Hovering Art Director action figure. So, uh, yeah, all this uh, 3D animation and character design was done by Studio Yum Yum here in London. And they make some really great characters. Uh, we really, we found them because we really like their toys. We have, uh, I think James Jarvis already said, that's my toys. <laughs> Inspired. <laughs> Uh, because like they're very humorous, but not necessarily too much like cliche caricatures with like really exaggerated features like giant heads or whatever. So Yum Yum developed the character and we were basically hovering them. And we really focused on this expressions a lot because we wanted to have him be as skeptical as possible. We want to have that look of pure skepticism. And they ended up doing loads of sketches based on the photos of the actor and playing with the eyebrows and like working on this expression. And because they're in London and we're in Amsterdam, we ended up sending miles and miles of emails back and forth and doing calls and whatever. And this made me very aware of a mistake I think is very common when you have a creative collaboration. And that's that you're naturally more inclined to offer a solution than to talk or to focus on problems. So I have a very lame example, but it explains kind of what I'm trying to say. If you see this figure and you think, well, he's not skeptical enough, then you're inclined to immediately offer a solution to that problem. You're inclined to immediately say, move his eyebrows down, remove his smile. Instead of clearly establishing the problem together first, which is his expression is too nice and he has to be more skeptical. And I think this is very important because if you skip, skip over this step, you lose out on a lot of possible other suggestions from the people you're collaborating with and like maybe he needs a completely different pose. So that's my second thing about hovering is to talk problems before solutions. I think every manager always tells us to think in solution, but I think when it comes to creative work, it's better to first establish the problems because there's many roads that lead to Rome. And now then we already get down to my last thing about hovering. Uh, this was when we came to making the packaging for our awesome vinyl figure. And we worked together with this designer at our agency, this super photogenic dude. Uh, <laughs> His name is Michael, and he, was, he worked on this project from the start, like from the very start. It's almost, I think, two years now. And he also had, the, he was partly responsible for the original idea of using hovering art directors. And having him be so a part of this campaign made him super eager to get started. And it made him so motivated. And he quickly got the idea that the packaging should express the personality of the hovering art director by making feedback part of the design. 
So, and I just love this idea because it's like, it's a whole, it's part of the design. The whole packaging is hovered. Um, and that brings me to my third thing about, my third note about what, uh, my third note that I learned about hovering is that nothing motivates like creative ownership. The people you work with, don't make them work for you, but make sure they own part of what you're doing because only then they will go the extra mile and they'll go above and beyond. So there's a campaign we made to show that Adobe Stock gets the everyday struggles of designers and that they're committed to making the life of designers easier through innovations. Now, Adobe asked me to mention that there's new big innovations on the way, only they didn't tell me what those are yet, so I don't know. You need to be like Barack Obama to know. But uh, so far, I know they improved their search algorithms with AI. They've added visual search, so you can like drag images into a search bar and it finds similar images. And they're now adding all kinds of video, high quality video content by partnering with like people like Pond5 and Reuters. Now, as my final act, I have one action figure to give away. I have it right here. Now, I myself still have to wait to get one. I don't have one yet. I worked on this campaign for two years, and I don't have one. This came straight from the factory in China. It's one of the very few first finished action figures. And I decided in the spirit of collaboration that I will give it away to someone with the toughest feedback on the packaging design you just saw. So I want people to, I didn't really think much about how we would do this, but I want people to kind of shout out some feedback, maybe stand up. I thought it would be really critical people in this audience, as it nice said. Too white? Not enough white space? <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> I, have, I have other images for inspiration. Shouldn't uh, uh, We. We, we actually talked about that, but we thought we would get a more negative response to having a female one, because he's so whiny. Sorry? Oh. Yeah, there, in the, there are many, though. Yeah. It should have been a female. Yeah, well, it's, it's a bit of a binary choice, so it could have gone either way. We flipped a coin. <laughs> in the film. Yeah. No, it's a valid, valid critique. But what does it have to do with the packaging, though? It's like hard to. <laughs> No, <laughs> actually not. <laughs> it, it's a bit like the carpet for Oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, so the, the thing doesn't open, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That, that, that is a good point. We're very annoyed with that, that this opens, actually. It's like they didn't make it properly. It wasn't meant to be like that. Um, I think my time's almost up. I will just... Give it to the first person to say something intelligent. Yes. <laughs> 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 Please um, go to the map room, get involved in all their things, give them some feedback face to face. But what a fantastic opening talk. Thank you so much. Yeah.